so hey everybody um i just wanted to record a hopefully short video about um something that i'm uh, very concerned about right now um it's this nft thing that you might have uh, heard about um uh, non-fungible tokens <clears throat> So it's a, a lot of it is kind of the logic of Bitcoin. Or I mean, it's on the technology of Bitcoin uh, on the on the blockchain. Um, and I am getting very afraid that um, everything great that computers and the Internet have given to the world um, is potentially going to. I don't know, come to an end <laughs> because this, and I'm sorry that this is a doomer video. There's nothing else I could say about it other than that. Um, this is a very terrifying situation. And uh, all I see is everybody being very excited about it. Like it's this great thing that, ooh, yay, a, a new technology is going to enable digital objects to become more artificially scarce than they already are. Um, and I don't see how people are so happy about this. Like, it's a great thing. Like, the whole point of the internet was that it makes everything available to everyone. <laughs> like, or that it at least has the capacity to do that. Um, and, like, scarcity is the biggest problem in the world. <laughs> like, scarcity drives all of the competition and exclusivity and uh unjust power dynamics where um there's this you know a small number of people in the population who fucking own everything and so this just seems like it's going to further that trend while undoing the one thing that was countervailing that trend which was the which was digitization and the new abundance that was enabled by computing and like computers that part of how they work part of how streaming or anything works is that your computer downloads a copy of the thing you're streaming and then you can see it um and then there's like protocols in there to automatically delete the thing after you stream it but in the short term while you're watching it or listening to it or reading it or whatever like your computer downloads it like every single web page you go to you can computer downloads the content of that web page and so you can see it on your computer um and you know and it stays in your temporary files and shit and doesn't save like permanently or whatever uh, for the most part but <clears throat> but this whole um non non-fungible tokens phenomenon seems like it could literally make all digital content cost money like it could make it so that it could totally normalize a paradigm where you have to where there's a paywall around every little piece of content that exists on the internet. And that's a nightmare scenario. Like the whole entire, the reason that there's the hope <laughs> for a abundant future is that digitization is able to make infinite copies of everything. And if we figure out a way, you know, and if, I mean, I'm just, we, um, and it, it, this NFT thing seems like the, ruling class has invested billions and billions and billions of dollars into developing a technology that would enable that paradigm of infinite abundance <laughs> to be obliterated. And so they could move back to the paradigm of where you got to pay for every fucking song you listen to and you're not, you know, or every movie that you watch and there's no, you know, bulk streaming services like, um, you know, Netflix and Spotify and SoundCloud and Bandcamp and all these things where the content is free to listen to it or watch it, you know, and, and so in some cases, you know, pay a monthly, you know, fee or whatever, uh, script subscription service. But like, this just seems like it's the perfect tool of the um, owners of the world to restrict access to everything, <laughs> even digital things like, and the whole utopian prospects of the internet <laughs> and was to go in the other direction. <laughs> and it seems like we're, um, basically doing the opposite of that. And, um, like, 
in the future, like f- the first wave of digitization and digital abundance was in purely informational object. Well, I mean, it's, it, it always is purely informational, but like the transition between atoms and bits, or I mean, bits and atoms um, that is like still in nascent, nascent stages between with 3D printing, like where every product, every object that um, is designed by a designer somewhere, the the uh, digital blueprint, like the CAD file or whatever, could conceivably be just available in a public database where everyone everywhere um, who has a 3D printer could download this digital blueprint for this object and then print that object at home. So I, you know, and I imagine this future scenario where everybody's got a 3d printer or there's like a community 3d printer on every block or whatever that, you know, neighborhood can use or whatever, like, a, like kind of like a tool library or whatever, but you go and and you could use this public resource to print objects and like any household objects that people pay for on Amazon and that were made by slaves in China, or whatever, where actually no China, uh, has, a um, uh, raised their own, raised the wages of their citizens. So uh, they're being made in sweatshops and elsewhere. <laughs> um, but it would obviate uh, 3d printing should obviate that. And so we wouldn't have to, so we, there wouldn't have to be slave labor, be, uh, being employed eventually. I mean, Obviously, slave labor is still being employed right now to mine the minerals and all this other shit to create the computers to be, be doing the, the infinite reproducing and whatever. But like, there could you know there could come a time in the future where, I mean, there will come a time in the future, I believe, where we'll have atomically pre- precise manufacturing where we could three D print mo- molecules and stuff like that. So theoretically, you could three D print circuit boards and all kind all the mat- components of a computer. Um, and so eventually that would even obviate the um, slave labor involved in um, the production of computing technology. And so that was a big part of my whole utopianism. That was a big part of why I was even, why I have I had hope for the future is that like, um, that eventually everything will be so abundant that the, that the marketplace just kind of recedes in relevance. Like, you know, Jamie Rifkin's book, uh, Zero Marginal Cost, um, the collaborative commons uh, and the eclipse of capitalism or something like that, I think is the subtitle. Um, but <clears throat> I guess I just, all this stuff about that I'm reading and, and, uh, and watching about NFTs, it's just like everybody's celebrating this, novel imposition of scarcity onto things that were otherwise that had otherwise become abundant and they're talking about that like it's this amazing great thing i mean and granted a lot of them are like speculative investors and um you know people like that who you know are fucking super rich already and their whole life is about just spending their whole days contemplating how to get richer (laughs) and it's like okay cool yeah i guess i see why those people will get excited about this technology but the way i see it is that average people and the society overall the cultural over overall the economy overall civilization overall is going to be greatly greatly harmed by this (laughs) this is going to be terrible and not to mention that it you know how much energy it takes to do the transactions on the ethereum um blockchain like the um that part i you know i I, i'm uh i mean i'm obviously very worried about that part but it's not i'm not quite as like existentially terrified about that mostly just because i do see i do think that we'll figure out renewable energy relatively (laughs) soon hopefully (laughs) But in the meantime, it's definitely accelerating the collapse of the ecosystem for sure by, you know, just using up so much energy that's mostly produced by fossil fuels. Um, but I don't know. It just feels like people are so excited about this and they have no idea the peril that the Internet is in with this new development. I just feel like 
I could see the end of streaming. I could just, I could see it going completely back to the paradigm where the music industry has so much power and the, you know, just the entertainment industry, the culture industry has so much power. Like people keep talking about how this NFT things will, will enable creators and artists to make a living where they, um, whereas now in the current internet paradigm, like it, they struggle or whatever. And it's like, okay, may, I mean, I just really don't think that's the case. I just, that's not the case actually. <laughs> not only do, for multiple reasons. So, so not only do most artists not actually own their own masters, they, they don't, they don't own the, the, the master recording for their, their, uh, their works. Like they, usually um, work for a studio or a label or whatever. And then those corporations own the intellectual property that is being produced by the artists. Like we don't live in a world where individual creators own their own creations, like for the most part, um, some do. And most of those people are nobodies. And therefore, there's not going to be the same sort of swelling market demand and hysteria and people paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for um, a digital authenticity stamp in a, you know, le ledger somewhere that who cares, man? Like, that's so ridiculous. Like, um, and I mean, it's always been ridiculous that people pay millions of dollars for art, <laughs> for a, for a paint. Pay, people pay a million dollars for a painting. That's always been disgusting, ridiculous. Um, one of the most obscene aspects of our new gilded age that we that we're living in, where we have a handful of billionaires and then billions of destitute um, people scraping to get by. And uh, even in the art world, in the music world, in the gra graphic art world, like, sure, there, there's a handful of artists that are really famous and in most cases already rich <laughs> um, from being famous. And so they're so they, this is like another way for them to get even more famous and even more rich. Um, but nobody artists who are trying to come up and don't have like millions of fans or whatever, they, they're just not going to be able to capitalize on this in the same way. Um, and so like, I remember uh, Chuck D said in the nineties, uh, I think it was the nineties, maybe early two thousands, but he was like, when he was like talking about that, he was like asked a question about the internet and he was like, um, he was like, he said something like um, in the future, we're going to have, um, we're going to have, like, because of the internet, because of the, you know, wide availability and accessibility of, you know, um, underground music on the internet. He's like, um, we're, we're going to have no more millionaire musicians and no musicians going hungry. And so the part of the logic of that was that it leveled the playing field because um, individual independent creators could go directly to the audience through the internet and not need the labels and all that stuff. And, um, and so that's why there's so much great underground music. And uh, I just feel like this is going to reverse that. It's going to, it's going to like, um, obviously the record labels have, you know, use the radio and Spotify and stuff like that to like really promote their, you know, their cash cow artists um, that are, you know, really churning the, you know, profits for the shareholders, um, the most, um, but there was still a lot of extra, there was a lot of other space for other artists to come up because of the internet. And because there were other independent ways to distribute music. And, um, like I've heard people saying that this NFT thing is not going to destroy that, but it's like, um, they don't know that <laughs> like, uh, capitalism is the, one of the most versatile, um, you know, resilient, authoritarian paradigms that has ever existed like it's able to uh, um, adapt itself to new technological advancements um, in a way that's kind of incredible like in the very beginning of the internet um, <clears throat> a lot of utopian visionaries saw it as the thing the the technological solution and that was originally the point uh, there's a, a big part of the you know originally you know develop the vision behind developing the internet 
um and i mean in the on the web or, or you know what, what you know what would they were calling the web or whatever well it started out as the well and then it became the web um but like the they, those visionaries saw that as like potentially the thing that could horizontalize society in obsolete commerce because people could um share things for free online and there's zero zero marginal costs so everybody in the world could see and read it um for free <laughs> like, which means that poor people can have access to things poor people cannot have access to things that, that cost money <laughs> poor people can barely pay their bills um and we have more and more and more and more poor people <laughs> as the system continues because the rich buy policy that enriches them at the expense of the rest of the population um which obviously is basic facts but i just feel like this whole nft thing people all the people who aren't or all the people who are so excited about it they just don't seem to understand that it's going to make that worse it's going to make economic stratification far far worse um so uh i don't know it's kind of been driving me crazy that people just seem to not be able to um see what's coming and see how bad this could be for cul the culture and uh for egalitarian values and uh for um i don't know the purpose of art like i could see it just generally corrupting art <laughs> even further <laughs> like i don't know man um so i feel like there's something else i wanted to say one last bit that i wanted to point i wanted to make um if all that wasn't bad enough <laughs> I, um, there's one more part of it that is um, immensely terrifying to me, which is um, the imposition of the monetary system into virtual reality. <clears throat> and so there's already in, in video games, there's already um, in-app purchases, um, which, which is where, you know, you just connect your credit card to the, game and then as you're playing and you know you're you want to get a new um a new tunic for your your avatar and whatever game you're playing or whatever you know you want to get some upgrade or um new weapon or whatever for your character in your video game and uh that should cost like real life money and that always seemed terrible to me because it's like it's just so it's just so incredibly unnecessary it's like the point of a virtual reality is to get away is to is to uh experience another world that's not governed by the same rules as this one and uh and and and, and importantly the the same like toxic exclusionary um commerce oriented ones <laughs> really i mean even like <clears throat> like you know I've, I've been playing zelda recently and you know there's the you know you collect rupees and you know buy little items in the shops and various levels or whatever and that's like all right i guess i see what they're doing there it's a you know game dynamic that I mean, it makes sense that it's another game because obviously the market is a game and capitalism is a game um and uh, money is just like a, a point scoring system in real life. Um, and so it makes some sense, I guess, to impose that on uh, on a game. But even then, I feel like it's a little bit of a uh, uncreative piece that where it's just kind of um, it's using that using currency in lieu of some other more fantastical point system or whatever or something i don't know I'm not a game designer but <laughs> but um one thing that i've always really feared um and especially i don't uh, there's a sh tv show i highly recommend i cannot highly recommend highly enough upload uh it's on amazon it's hilarious that uh it's on amazon because they're kind of mocking a uh, future vision that i would imagine the bezos is of the world um would be quite um keen on <laughs> it's kind of a satire on the uh of a on a capitalist uh version of 
mind uploading uh, or of a, of a cyber afterlife through uploading conscious uploading consciousness where you know there's a class system inside the virtual reality um so you know this guy dies and then he gets uploaded into this virtual afterlife world and uh <clears throat> and in order to like you know you get some a virtual um there's like you know a there's like a virtual Taco Bell like type kind of thing where you can have like some, you know, buy a t virtual taco, you know, and you, you have to have a human down or on earth that's continuing to pay the, the bill. And, but it's like, there's no necessity for that whatsoever. It's just like a, a way for the company that's providing the service, I guess, to, can, you know just rake in mad cash off of the consciousnesses that are existing in this virtual world and like i'm big on I, like i really really do think that by the time you know we're you know old or whatever that this uploading shit will be real and have be, have be t fully developed um but and and i i just i do so i do think that like our generation and and after will be able to upload our consciousness to cyberspace um but this nfc or sorry nft um technology seems like the the key to like the technical solution on from their from their perspective the capitalist perspective to making every little thing um cost money inside this virtual world where there's no cost to anything actually it's all just i mean besides the electricity but by then we'll have fully renewable free electricity abundant energy um and so besides that besides the energy it takes to run the simulation you know on the whatever fucking servers they have on earth um I guess I see this NFT thing as the way that neoliberalism, where everything is for sale, every little piece of reality is for sale, um, can be a reality. And so you have to work. So then even in the afterlife, um, the cyber digital apt afterlife, you might still have to work. Does that make sense? Like you might still, like they might create some kind of, virtual drudgery inside the virtual reality to make poor people who upload <laughs> their minds do in order to continue to survive in this virtual world um which just seems like unbelievably dystopian to me um and so i guess i see that's why this just seems like such an incredibly dystopian technology it's just like that it's just going to be a thing where I don't know. It's a way to preserve scarcity where it shouldn't exist, doesn't exist. It's a, it's a way to create scarcity where there, where there has already been, even where there has already been a digital abundance for the past 20 years. <laughs> like it just seems like this is their, their, their ultimate tool of preserving scarcity um, in perpetuity. And that's the purpose of it. And that's what the capitalists are celebrating about this new technology. Like I read this Wall Street Journal article this morning about it. And it's just, they're all like, oh my gosh, this is the new way to make billions of dollars off of um, digital content. And it's like, oh, and they're like, we finally cracked it or whatever. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, uh, oh, so anyways. That's just my two cents. Um, I guess uh, let me know what you think. I'm very curious uh, if anybody else feels the same way. So anyways, love you guys. Thanks for watching.